Hi, I'm Andrew Joseph Keith. This is the Figure Sculpting Fundamentals course, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to build your own adjustable stand for your wire armatures. First, let's consider when you'll need a stand to support your wire armatures and when you can probably get away without one. Think about the pose. If we're sculpting a standing pose, we will probably want some kind of external support for the armature. One exception is some smaller gesture studies, let's say under eight inches, that can usually be sculpted by hand and then stuck to a base just with some clay. If we're sculpting a seated pose or lying down, we can usually get away without some kind of external support because the pose itself is already pretty stable. For these sculptures, some clay will usually be enough to secure the armature in place. The next thing to consider is the size of the sculpture, because that will indicate just how much support the sculpture will need. Finally, we can think about how we want the stand to support the armature. The most common method that I've seen is when the support for the armature comes out of the sacrum or the side of the hip, but the armature can also be hung from above. Let's start with the most common type of support that works well for sculptures that are 10 to 40 inches tall. This support will be adjustable and will be connected to the spine of your wire armature. These supports are much more sturdy than stiff wire. To build this armature stand, we will be using supplies that you can usually find at your local hardware store or online. We will need a baseboard that is at least 3 fourths of an inch thick by 1 foot by 1 foot or larger. A 1 half inch metal floor flange that you can find in the plumbing area. A 1 half inch by 16 inch metal pipe. A 3 8 inch by 24 inch zinc threaded rod. Two 1 half to 1 and 1 4 inch hose repair clamps or hose clamps. Some number 8 small 1 half inch wood screws. A screwdriver and some wire cutters or a metal saw to cut the threaded rod. Once we have all of our supplies, this method is pretty straightforward. We will start by screwing the metal floor flange onto the baseboard. Place this at least one half of an inch from the edge along the center line of the board or in the corner of the board. Drilling small holes for the screws can help prevent the wood from cracking. Once we have that in place, we will bend out the threaded rod to the shape that we need. We are going to bend the threaded rod 90 degrees in two places to make a Z shape. The first bend is going to be 8 inches in at a right angle. An easy trick is to place part of the rod inside the metal pipe so that it hits the opening of the pipe right where we want to bend the rod. This gives us more leverage and makes bending the rod much easier. Now we're going to come out six inches from the bend we just made so that we are about two inches away from the end of the rod. We are going to bend it 90 degrees in the opposite direction of the first bend, making that Z shape. Now we can use a metal saw or wire cutters to make a cut about four inches down from the first bend. If we place the edge of the pipe at that weak area, you should be able to bend and break it. Now that we have the threaded rod bent into shape, you can twist the one half inch pipe onto the metal floor flange, securing it to the baseboard. Then slide the hose clamps onto the metal pipe and slide the threaded rod inside the two hose clamps. Make sure that they're spaced far enough apart. We can then use the screwdriver to tighten the hose clamps and lock the threaded rod in place. One thing I see a lot on pre-manufactured armature stands is that they usually support the armature by attaching to the back at the sacrum. 
I prefer not to use this area because there are a lot of important landmarks and features around the sacrum. Instead, I try to have the support in the mid or upper back area, and if it is at the level of the sacrum, I try to have it coming off to one side. If you want to have it coming off to one side, you can place the floor flange in the corner of the board instead of on the center line. To attach an armature to the stand, we can align the spine of the armature with the two inches of metal rod, and then take some additional wire and wrap the wire tightly around the rod and the spine of the armature. If you need to adjust the armature, just loosen the hose clamps, move it into place, and then tighten them again. The advantage of this type of stand is that it's adjustable, it's reusable, it's pretty sturdy, and by using sturdier materials like one inch pipe instead of half inch pipe, we can make larger stands for larger armatures going all the way up to about half life size. The disadvantage is that there will be a metal rod sticking out of your armature, and it will cost about the same as if you bought a smaller armature stand that was pre-manufactured online. Though I find that this one, made at home, is a lot more sturdy than most of the ones that I've seen online. Another option for supporting the armature is by hanging it from above. This can work well because then you don't have to worry about running into the support as you sculpt the body. For the hanging armature stand, we will be using some of the same materials as the adjustable armature. But instead of threaded rod, we will want another section of half inch pipe, around 8 to 10 inches long, and a 1 half inch 90 degree elbow joint. We will also use a longer 24 inch pipe. This type of stand is a lot easier to make, and it doesn't require us to adjust any of the parts, like how we had to bend the threaded rod in the previous stand. First, we fasten the metal floor flange in place with the wood screws at the edge of the baseboard, then we twist the 24 inch pipe in place on the floor flange, attach the elbow joint to the pipe, twist the 8 inch pipe onto the elbow joint and tighten it until it's snug, align it so the 8 inch pipe extends over the baseboard, and there you have it. That was easy. To secure an armature, Simply attach a section of aluminum wire to the head of the armature and then bring the wire up to the 8 inch pipe above and twist the wire around the pipe. You may also want to use a bit of clay to secure the feet in place so that the armature doesn't move around while you're sculpting. Or, if you need even more stability, you can staple the feet of the armature to the baseboard so you can pull the armature taut. I try not to do this though because I like to reuse these baseboards for many sculptures. The advantage of this method is that it is very simple. You will be able to sculpt any figure shorter than the long length of the vertical pipe. And there is no rod or piping coming out of the side of the sculpture because it will be coming out of the top of the head. The disadvantage of this method is that the sculpture will not be as secure because the only support is from above, so when you're sculpting or using tools on the sculpture, it may start to wiggle in place. I've also had the wire break that was holding up the sculpture, so if you're doing a larger sculpture, make sure that the wire is thick that's supporting the entire sculpture or that you have multiple strands attaching it to the pipe above. If you're not interested in building your own stand for sculpture, Below are some affiliate links to where you can purchase your own online. You know, if you want to do it the easy way. Okay, that's it for now. The premium course has additional demos, lessons, 3D models, and much more. So go check out the full course at proco.com sculpture. I'll see you in the next lesson.